boys and girls, and welcome to our e-learning lab. My name is Mr. Rollins, and I'm here at Broker Mountain Science Center. And today we're going to learn a little bit about severe weather and safety. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a quick video clip. And what I would like for you to do is use your sense of hearing and your sense of sight. You're going to observe with your eyes and ears of what's going on in this video. So if you take a look, what is happening in the video? What do you see? What do you hear? So thunder follows lightning. And we're going to try today to create some lightning in the lab. If you look at this first picture, you see there's some dark clouds, there's lightning bolts going down, there's probably a lot of rain, and this is a typical severe thunderstorm. Now thunderstorms can be severe or they can be mild. So just remember, you need to be concerned. If you're outside and you hear it thundering, go indoors. But before we talk about safety, I'm going to show you, we're going to create a lightning bolt in the lab here using this plasma ball. Now, boys and girls, it has a, a glass case around it. So when I create the lightning bolt, it's not going to shock me, okay? So we're going to put this down. And I'm going to turn it on. And let's see here. Move that just a little bit. Mr. Taylor's turned our lights off. And watch this. This is the plasma ball. And I'm going to generate a lightning bolt that you can see. Here we go. Look at that lightning bolt. Now, boys and girls, that's what makes thunderstorms so dangerous are the lightning bolts, or the lightning that's created in the storm. You can see. And lightning is from cloud to ground, okay, when it strikes. And lightning, boys and girls, is hotter than the surface of the sun. So for someone to survive a lightning strike is very, very lucky. Okay, so that's our plasma ball. Now, like I said, when we're talking about thunderstorms, you don't have to be afraid of thunderstorms. You just need to be mindful that there is a thunderstorm. So if you're outside playing and you hear it rumble in the distance, Mr. Taylor, what's that saying that you use? When thunder roars, go indoors. So when thunder roars, go indoors. So if you're outside playing, go inside, get you a snack. Most of our thunderstorms in the upstate only last 15 to 30 minutes, and then you can go back outside. But never, ever, ever get in water. If you're in a swimming pool, get out. If you're in a lake, get out. Do not take a shower or a bath during a thunderstorm. And if you're outside, do not stand under a tall tree, okay? And uh, because 
tall objects outside draw lightning, and you definitely do not want to touch anything that's metal during a thunderstorm. Okay? So one thing that thunderstorms can create is our next severe weather, known as a tornado. And boys and girls, if you look at this tornado, it's got those dark clouds, and those dark clouds form, and they start circulating. And what will happen is it can create a funnel cloud. And a funnel cloud is basically a tornado that does not make it to the ground. You just see the, the funnel up in the sky. But if that funnel reaches the ground, then we call it a tornado. And tornadoes can have winds up to 300 miles per hour and can be very destructive. So just remember that. And we're going to talk about safety in just one minute with the tornadoes. So if you come over here, we're going to look at the, in the lab, we're going to try to create a tornado in the lab here. So, and this will be safe. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in. got some clouds forming. Turn on the machine. Some clouds forming during our thunderstorm. See how the clouds are starting to rotate? And the more they rotate, the more they form and can possibly create a tornado. a little bit better. You can see the tornado. Tornadoes can be very destructive and the reason tornadoes are so dangerous is meteorologists have a hard time predicting when they're going to happen. So lots of times when they predict that they're going to happen it only gives you minutes or seconds before then. So if you ever hear of a tornado warning, make sure and get to shelter. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But watch what happens when I cut this off. What happens to that tornado? It just goes away, doesn't it? And that's what happens in nature. As quickly as a tornado forms, it can quickly go away. So let's see that one more time. There's the tornado, does its damage, and then once it stops, it just goes away. All right. this. Now, boys and girls, in nature, tornadoes form from the thunder cloud to the ground. And what you do see, what makes it visible, is all those little water droplets and water vapor, too, inside that uh, funnel cloud. And talking about tornado damage, you can see here the roof of the house has been removed and cars have been pushed into the house. Tornadoes can pick up cars, it can break trees. If you go back um, to the tornado damage, you can see that it pushed over the bus and look at the tree that's all splintered there. But boys and girls, if you're ever in a tornado or you hear about a tornado warning, you need to get to the center of your house, either in the bathroom, get into the tub, or get into a closet in the center of your house. If you have a basement, then that would be the safest place to go, is to go down into the basement until the storm is over. Now, boys and girls, the strongest tornadoes can reach about 150 Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, no, uh, it, it was 300 miles per hour, so Mr. that's Taylor. right. So, Mr. Taylor, stop it. Okay, we're going to go on. So, um, anyway, I lost my track. Okay, hurricanes. Here we go. Hurricanes form over water, and tornadoes, boys and girls, form over land. Just remember that. Tornadoes form over land, hurricanes form over water. And if you look at this picture, that's a hurricane, and in the middle is called the eye of the hurricane. 
where there's no wind that's actually blowing, it's very still. But where you see the clouds around that eye is where you get very strong winds. And the winds of a hurricane can reach up to 200 miles per hour. But once it goes over land, it starts to slow down and lose its energy. Now, if you look at this picture, we just had a hurricane here known as Hurricane Delta. And that dumped a lot of rain in the upstate. I measured three inches of rain at my house this weekend. And if you look at the picture on the right, that shows the route that Hurricane Laura took six weeks ago. And that was basically the same route that Delta took when it came on land. And that's why the upstate got a lot of rain. The picture on the left shows hurricane winds, how strong they can be. Look at how all the, the, the limbs and leaves on those trees are pointing in the same direction from those strong hurricane winds. And this is hurricane damage. Damage from hurricanes is mainly from wind and that storm surge. Storm surges can be deadly. If you look at the upper left-hand picture, that's the storm surge pushing that salt water inland and can cause flooding. The picture to the right of that is some apartments that have been demolished by the, the high winds and the storm surge. The boat down on the bottom is sunk because of that storm surge pushing the water onto the boat and then a lot of people lose power during these hurricanes because those winds knock down power lines and um, that's never good so today i'm going to try to create a hurricane in the lab by using this bowl of water and we're going to use the Elmo so you can see it better. And let me get my face here. And some food coloring. This is something that you could do at home also. So I've got a bowl with water. I've got some food coloring. And I need something to stir the water with. So I'm going to stir it. Okay. I'm going to stir to get that circular motion going. I'm actually going to turn the light on here. And I'm going to take some coloring and look at how that hurricane is forming the blue rings would be the clouds representing the clouds that swirling motion would be how the the shape of the hurricane forms and look at how it's spreading out boys and girls that's how as a hurricane grows, it can get larger and larger and larger. It can get much larger than a tornado. But that's pretty neat. And like I said, you could try this at home with a bowl of water and some food coloring and see. But that's a pretty good example of how a hurricane moves. All right. Now, one thing I mentioned about hurricanes is that they drop a lot of water. And when we have a lot of water that happens at one time from rain, we get flooding. And here's a picture of a flood. Look at how the water has risen up to where the windows are up to the car tires, up to the front door. And um, you can see that there's a lot of water. Now, boys and girls, I know that second graders cannot drive, but if you're in the car riding with your parents and you come across a flooded road, make sure that you 
don't try to cross that road. If you can't see the road itself, do not try to drive through. When flooded, turn around. Don't drown is the most important thing. Now, we're going to try to make it flood here in the lab. And I have a little farm set up here. See this? This is a little farm set up. And boys and girls, rain is good. We have to have rain in order for us to have food, in order for us to have water. And I want you to see what happens. So rain is okay. And as long as we get a little of it, it's fine. The ground soaks it up, and you never have to worry about flooding. But if we get a lot of rain during hurricanes or severe thunderstorm, look at the ground, what's happening to the ground. There's nowhere for the water to go, and that's how we get flooding. Okay? So that's how we get Flooding is when the water has no place to go. And eventually the ground will absorb that water and the creeks and rivers will take that water away. But until then, the water stay high and you can be flooded out. So boys and girls, going back to a hurricane, if you ever hear about a hurricane morning and you're at the beach on vacation, be sure to come back home to the upstate and you'll be safe. If you're stuck at the beach, you'd want to go into a structure that's safe, um, that could not be damaged. But in a flooding area, you need to move to higher ground. So during a flood, or if they've called for a flash flood watch, and you live near a creek or a river, get to higher ground. Go stay with a friend or your grandparents or somebody that lives further away from water or on a hill somewhere. Let's see, Mr. Rollins, um, a question, which is produces, which is the most dangerous, uh, they're wanting to know, a hurricane or a tornado? Well, tornadoes are probably the most dangerous because tornadoes are, like I said earlier, are very hard to predict and by the time the meteorologists see that a tornado has touched down, it gives very little warning um, that they can get out to prepare people. With a hurricane, they can know weeks in advance what direction that hurricane may be going and at least 48 hours in advance to know that it's going to hit a certain area. So do do you know which, do we have more hurricanes or tornadoes in the area? That is a great question, and I would have to say we probably have more tornadoes in South Carolina than we do hurricanes. But we get our fair share of hurricanes too, don't get me wrong. And hurricanes can create tornadoes, so just remember that. Not only can thunderstorms create tornadoes, but hurricanes can create tornadoes. And that just happened this past weekend. That's right. Well, boys and girls, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, hopefully, we'll have you back here soon at Roper Mountain Science Center to enjoy our lessons. But until then, stay safe and stay happy.